Good morning. 6.53 a.m. over here, and in this episode of Let Me Talk About My Cancer, um, friends and family, we, you know, it's been difficult for my wife for the past couple of weeks after receiving my diagnosis and, um, you know, how that has impacted everything that she does. Um, for me, it's been relatively easy. I haven't, I don't generally let these kind of things get to me. You know, I've wandered through life without caring much about anything, to be honest. Unaware, in a sense. Um, so I know, but I know that for her, it's been very difficult. I know that she's been under a lot of stress, as one would assume she would be and I think it's getting to her. She doesn't let it show. She's a wonderful person, but um, I'm not very easy to live with either. So she should have recognized that in the past 12 years. Um, that's one thing. And then the other, so that's, that's the, the immediate family part of things. And then friends as well. Um, after I, I told one of my uh, best, closest friends that I have lymphoma, a couple of hours later, he started researching mantle cell lymphoma and you know started asking me a couple of questions. I'm really grateful that he would actually go through the process of searching about it and researching it and, and um, trying to figure out what it is. But he started asking me a couple of questions about what exactly it is, where exactly it was found, what the diagnosis was. And um, I joked, as I tend to do with most things serious about the topic, and I told him, listen, don't worry about it. You don't need to do too much research because uh, I'm not going to be here much longer anyway. Um, we kind of dropped the conversation there. But then a couple of days later, he came to me. He said, you really freaked me out when you said that. And um, I'm the kind of guy who jokes about everything all the time. Nothing serious ever phases me, or at least I don't let it seem like it phases me because I, I take everything, life included, as a joke. But um, I'm, I think I need to understand that the people around me don't necessarily take things as lightly as I do. And I need to make sure that I'm a little more um, mindful of their feelings as well now the first thing that my wife said after we got the diagnosis i say we got the diagnosis because you know this isn't the kind of thing that i'm going to be living through alone in a in a bubble i may go i may be going through it physically but she is definitely going to be going through it a lot more mentally than i am uh one of my biggest worries is how she and the kids are gonna handle everything to be honest um so one of the things that she said to me when we when we first got the diagnosis was that it was my opportunity or it was my time to be selfish not to let um anything anybody else says or thinks get to me and not to permit anyone to uh, do something that I don't like that I should do whatever I want to do I should say whatever I want to say and just you know be very selfish until this whole thing is um, taken care of now the difficulty with that is that I think I've been pretty selfish my entire life selfishness has never been uh, an issue for me I've never said to myself, oh, someone, you are being too selfish today, because generally I don't feel that way. I am a very, very selfish person. I, I do think of myself before others in most circumstances, and I don't, I don't let things get in my way of getting the things I want. But I'm feeling that 
with everything that's going on, I think it's put a lot of pressure on my wife. And she's been very kind to to keep it, to hold on to it, and not to share that pressure. But even though on the surface, she is very put together, very in control. And, you know, she looks totally fine. Um, I know that just under the surface, she's extremely, extremely fragile. And I, I don't give her as much help as she deserves. Um, I don't tell her as much as I should how grateful I am for everything that she does for me. So I'm going to start doing that more often. She's a wonderful person. Um, extremely, extremely helpful during this time. I don't think I would have been able to go through this without her as easily as I have because uh, she's my rock. I I lean on her. I'm I'm able to pass things off as a joke because um, you know she's there and she takes them seriously. So friends and family super important um i know that as a person who's suffering from cancer you have the ability you have the uh, permission to to think of yourself before others but i would caution myself at least to make sure that the important people around you are Yeah, I don't know if I have much more to say on that topic today, but that's that's what it is. I wanted to do a quick one just because this came up and I wanted to make sure that I address every single facet of my journey with um, MCL because I don't want it to be all, you know, fun stuff and not necessarily talk about all of the uh, difficult things to talk about. But, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm planning to do a couple of shorter videos as well. And oh my God, I have to say this. One of the things that keeps coming up for me when I think about these kind of videos is those videos that people make to leave behind for their kids. Michael Scott at the office, um, making a video for, <laughs> for his son that, uh, you know, in the very early um, seasons that there, there was no there wasn't even um, any talk of kids or a relationship at that time and, and he was already making videos for his kids and teaching them stuff from beyond the grave so that's one of the things that keeps coming up for me do I want to make videos like that for my boys um, and actually it's very difficult to um to be with them in the same space and and to enjoy their presence as much as I want to. I'm, I'm glad I remembered to bring this up here since we are talking about the friends and family thing. So this might be the best place to say this. Um, they're kids, they're 10 and six, almost seven. They wanna play, they want to run around, they wanna have fun, they wanna laugh and scream at each other. And 95% of the time I, don't have the patience for that i'm uh, usually not in the best place mentally for screaming and laughing especially when we're in the car and they're in the um, back fidgeting and, and you know kicking and, and playing and screaming things like that so i tend to get a lot um out of sorts and i tend to talk with them sternly i try not to yell and scream i don't yell and scream most of the time but you know i i do get frustrated with them quite often and sometimes when they want to play at inopportune times or you know all of a sudden at 9 30 an hour and a half past their bedtime my 10 year old brings over 
one of those tiny little air hockey tables and says, okay, you promised you'd play with me today. And, and that frustrates me because although I don't ever want to say no when it comes to playing with him at the same time, you know, 9.30 at night isn't the time to start uh, an air hockey game, especially when you, I've asked you 20 times to go to bed uh, between 8 and 9.30 p.m. So those are all issues. I, I'm thinking a lot more now about the kind of impression I leave on the kids. I'm thinking a lot more now about, um, you know, creating memories for them having things that they remember me for and I don't want them to remember me for all the yelling and screaming and anger but that's what seems to be coming up most of the time or at least at least I hope that that's what I am remembering and not necessarily what they're seeing most of the time but it's there and I don't want that to be my legacy I want them to remember me as their fun-loving dad who played with them, who had fun with them, who uh, who wrestled with them, who bit them, who uh, tickled them, who made them scream laughing. I don't want to yell at and scream at them. Um, but at the same time, it feels like I need their help to make sure that I don't yell and scream. <sighs> so... That's another aspect of the kids and the friends and family thing. Um, another aspect of the friends and family thing is my parents. Now, I love my parents. They are um, quite far. They live in Dubai. I live in Vancouver. Um, we Zoom at least a couple of times a week. We talk on the phone at least another couple of times a week. Um, and I know how, how much my mom wants to be here with her child during this process. I don't know how much I have the capacity to have uh, people around me right now. A lot of things aggravate me. A lot of things uh, frustrate me. So a lot of the time I find that I actually want to be alone by myself. But I know that people need me to show up. You know, my mom needs me to talk to her, to tell her things are going to be okay. My wife needs me to be there uh, to do things with her. And, and my kids need me to be there to play with them. And as much as I want to do those things, I want to be there for all those, those people. I also find that I need a lot of time for myself. You know, not to do anything um, remotely um, awe-inspiring, you know, nothing that you know, I'm not meditating or, or, you know, solving major problems in my alone time. No, I'm just sitting around and playing most of the time on my iPhone. Um, just basically not thinking about life not thinking about the responsibilities of the day and things like that so my mom keeps asking if she if i want her to come and stay with us and that would be uncomfortable on a couple of different levels um predominantly because i need my space and i don't want you to come here and then you know I would imagine that if she were to come here, she would want to spend as much time with me as possible. And that would be the purpose for of her visit. And then if I were to only see her a couple of hours a week, um, that would hurt. And I don't necessarily want to do that to her. So what I've told her for right now is I'm going to need her when I start chemo. I don't want to bring her here. And, you know, frustrate her for a month before we start chemo and then have her shut down during the chemo. Because it's going to be a couple of months. It's going to be at least six months of chemo. Um, I think I'm going to stop it there. Enough for one day. Um, catch you on the other side.